Rusty and bloody metal has always been a personal favorite of mine as I spent a lot of time, well I used to spend a lot of time when I did have time uh, playing like role playing and fantasy games on the computer. So let's go ahead and see if we can do something along those lines that would remind us of that genre. I've got a 3 inch by 3 inch image here and that's just so I can uh, you know work on a single letter so you can see the effect. And I'm going to set black in my, or excuse me, gray in my foreground and I'm just going to type something. How about a big U? And I'm using the type selection tool or type mask tool for this and I'm just going to fill that with the gray that I put in the foreground. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that layer and this time I'm going to set oh, a dark red in the foreground. I'm going to fill with the dark red using that foreground color. So now I have two instances of that letter. In the background I'm going to put a lighter red. Okay, so you see that down here. Let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to filter brush strokes spatter. And now we start to get a little spattering along the edges here. So I'll click OK. And it's very faint right now. But what I'm going to do is select color range and I'm going to select the dark red, the primary color. If you look over here, we'll see that those spatters along the edges are left out of the selection. So I'll click OK and simply hit delete. So I start to get, or I do get, that gray underneath. And we get this nice little spatter pattern along the edge. I'm going to go down and first work with the gray layer now. And I'll open up my bevel and emboss settings. I'm going to change the technique to chisel hard. I'm going to turn off Use Global Light and change the Gloss Contour Altitude to 25. All right. I'll increase the size, maybe not so much, just faintly on the edge, so it doesn't quite um, come past the areas of that red. Now I'm going to check anti-aliased by the Gloss Contour here and I'll simply start manipulating the gloss to make it look more metal-like. Okay, And don't worry, it's looking a little reflective in that flat gray right now, but that's okay. I'll just click OK, because we're going to go down to Gradient Overlay now. And I'm going to create a metal style gradient, which basically is an alteration between lights and dark grays. I'll click OK. Actually, before I do that, maybe I want to save that gradient or create a new gradient. So now it's resident in that palette. I'll click OK. Alter the altitude a little bit. And if we want to darken it, of course, go to Multiply or one of those color modes. Overlay isn't going to quite do it. I'll try Multiply and just reducing the opacity. Ah, we'll leave the opacity up there. Because we can brighten this up in other ways. Now I'm going to go check Contour. Again, I'll click on Anti-Aliased and start manipulating the edge of this bevel. And it's just going to make it look a little sharper. If we want to brighten that up, 
we can go to satin change it to a lighter color and change the blend mode say to soft light or screen that'll really lighten things up a bit we can come down here to that gradient again see when I change it back to normal we're getting a lot of reflections so now it's just kind of a um, touch and go game we're just gonna alter some of our reflections maybe come back down here to this gloss contour and we want to darken up some of the dark areas another option is to simply go in and fill that letter with a darker color or even a gradient so since we saved that gradient before we can leave the layer style applied but this time I'm gonna fill that selection with a gradient we'll see what happens okay we reduce the amount of reflection there or the amount of glow by manipulating um, the satin and basically just play with it until you're satisfied with it is uh, my recommendation okay I'm gonna I could sit here and tweak this forever but I'm gonna stop at this point at least as far as that goes because I want to start working on that paint that's applied to the outer edges so I'll simply select that layer and now I can play with layer styles there for instance we we'll, uh, let's start with a bevel and emboss change our reflection color our highlight color and shadow color to something a little bit more in the pink realm or red realm okay turn off use global light give it a little more reflection by changing the altitude to 60 to 75 let's try a 75 setting and that gives it like a reflection uh, more like a wet spattering type thing okay tweaking the depth and the size of the bevel helps us uh, enhance that a bit. Let's go into 100% so we can see what's going on. Alright, so now it almost looks like blood spattered all around the edge of this uh, metal object. Let's return to that big letter U again. I have a rusty metal texture loaded into my patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and select that right now and apply it. Now on my gradient overlay I'm going to change the blend mode or let's well let's just try reducing the opacity as we reduce the opacity we start to get that texture coming through as a matter of fact my pattern I'm going to change the scale down to about 50 percent and now back to my gradient overlay if I change it to overlay now we're going to get something along these lines I can reduce the amount of uh, that that pattern comes through simply by going in and adjusting the opacity for that layer. If we want to darken things up on the edges, of course, we can go to Inner Glow, select a dark color, go to Multiply, and increase the size. Now let's say uh, I want to play with this these blood drops just a little bit more. Let's do some experimenting. 
as far as uh, uh, bevel and emboss settings. For instance, if I go to pillow emboss, it's actually going to pit the metal. And of course we can change this however we like. But this is going to make it look like it's pitted right in there. Okay. If I go to my blending options, I can reduce the fill opacity to darken things up so some of that metal actually comes through. And it looks a little bit more like old blood or rust. Uh, some type of um, you know oxidation going on on the edges there but anyway that's the effect if you just basically trial and error and keep tweaking but uh, the thing I wanted to point out is um, really work to make those metals look metal and and then of course the reflections in making the liquid around the edges um, you know, look liquid. Uh, so your highlights and shadows are, are very important when you're working with this sort of thing. Now what I can do, one last thing, of course, is for my metal layer style, once I have that the way I like, uh, of course, this was done in two layers, but two separate layer styles. I can go ahead, save the first style, and then also, if I'd like to use that um, effect that we used around the edge again I can simply save that style also and then those will be loaded into the bottom of the layers palette or layer styles palette